And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. What is up, party people? Welcome to DFW Real Estate Weekly. We, we got a full studio today, folks. There's going to be introductions and everything. Uh, we are pumped to have home builder, architect, designer, contractor extraordinaire, Adam Panter, in the studio. We'll get to that here shortly. We are also thrilled to be launching our June peanut butter and jelly drive because, as you know, I get angry and excited every June. Angry that there are hungry people in Dallas-Fort Worth because that's stupid that in a community this affluent, we have people that don't know where their next meal is. So we will invite you shortly to join us in meeting the needs of our neighbors as simple as a jar of peanut butter and jelly or a quick Venmo uh, to at PBJ Drive. So we'll talk more about that. We're, we are excited uh, in addition to my rage and fury. Uh, we're excited because every summer we raise the bar of how many kiddos and how many folks that we can feed with our partners. Uh, across different media outlets and radio stations and social media channels, as well as grocery partners and other businesses and sponsors and vendors and things that all agree that it's dumb, that there are kiddos and, and folks of all ages, but especially the kiddos that really, truly don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And they're not in control of that. So we're going to help bridge that gap. We're also really excited about our summer fun guide, as well as what's happening all across the real estate market with a little bit of a special emphasis today on uh, inventory issues as well as kind of the higher end luxury market. So stay with us. There's something for everybody today and we're going to get to it. Hey. Hey, Ian. How are you? Good. There he is. The English wonder himself, the Yanni Donnie, by the way, still nursing an injury, still yep. playing hurt yep. and still not all that thrilled mm -hmm. about uh, English soccer at the moment. So let's just. Well, you know, it's over now, so we can stop talking about it. Well, ne there's always next year. Next year's going to be better, right? It still hurts right now. Okay. Anyway, this first segment is brought to you by Patrick Leros and his team over at Cardinal Financial. Whether you are looking to get a mortgage for a purchase of a home, whether you're looking to refinance your home, maybe you're looking to get an investment property and you need some help with the mortgage on that side of things. PatrickGleros.com is where you need to go. You can start an application right there on his website, PatrickGleros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, PatrickGleros.com, 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308. 804. Go to ToddTremontyTeam.com, click the radio tab, and you can find all the recommended pros and vendors right there. Do you think that's his greatest media skill is how quickly he says NMLS? Because it's a gift, and he's so proud of it. And I'm so proud of you for being proud of it. PatrickGlaris.com. Hey, here's the deal, folks. We're going to dig in right now uh, with Adam Panter, uh, my architect, my builder. Could, could be your architect. Could be your builder. Um, but let me tell you why really quickly. Number one, there's not enough houses out there. For those of you that have read the wrong headlines or believe the wrong media postings, we do not have a massive surge in housing inventory in North Texas. Uh, we have fluctuating housing inventory. It changes every minute as homes sell and, buy, uh, and are bought and as uh, new construction is put out onto the market and pulled off of the market as lots are bought and building permits and quote unquote housing starts are approved and all those things. But many, many, many people are thinking, man, I would really like to move, but I don't know if it would be wise to move. And we talk about that from the resale perspective all the time, but let me invite Adam in real quick. We'll back out here in a second and do some intros, but let's just get right to the good stuff. When people are struggling with, I don't know if there is a house out there that would meet my needs, or every time I see one, it's gone. Is building really an option for the quote unquote typical, you know, Dallasite, you know, DFW resident? Yeah, Todd. Uh, I really do think it is an option. There's not many places out there that people go, hey, I want to up and uproot my family and move them to a totally different part of town just because I can buy a bigger house or have a different lot to live on. And so what I've been seeing is a lot of people realizing, talking to an architect like myself and saying, what if we went vertical? What if we yeah. went out horizontal? But many people, even on the lots here in DFW, you can't go horizontal. Vertical may be the only option. Yeah. And so I do believe... We've, we've opened up a new new part of the market that maybe hasn't been tapped in the past. Yeah, I, I, in, in historically, we've seen these things come in waves, right? There was a period where Lower Greenville was kind of, go, and it still is, but where it kind of broke the seal on, hey, let's rip the top off and go add a second story because I don't have any more lot width. I don't have any more depth. The building line out front is, is what it is. Um, and so we saw that hit 
Lower Greenville. Then we saw it creep into Lake Highlands. Then we saw West Richardson starting to do that with some of the single car garage, kind of more bungalow type, early, early Richardson homes. Now we're seeing that spread into Canyon Creek and Prairie Creek. We've seen that come over uh, into Wiley, Saxe, Murphy, and beyond. Obviously, we're seeing teardowns and rebuilds. We're seeing lots being bought. We're seeing acreage property being bought out in Fort Worth. We've seen a lot of the same things everywhere from in-town Fort Worth out to Alito and Weatherford and beyond, certainly Southwest Fort Worth. I could keep going, but this is not necessarily a new desire, but we've seen very, very few people actually pull the trigger and capitalize on this where a company like yours is rare and why I took advantage of your services is really, man, I hate to compliment him this much on a, on a radio. Like it's, we've become friends and it just feels like something you don't do, but you're the unique aspect of the business where you are a licensed architect who has worked on hundred million dollar projects with massive construction companies, but also still really enjoy not only designing, but then getting your hands on it. You had a hammer in your hand at my house the other day. You're not normally the physical builder, but you're the builder that organizes and brings all the right people together um, to build the house, to do the addition, to go vertical, to convert the garage. You know, just feel free to expand on that. But let me ask the question, what makes that unique when, when you are the architect and the builder? Well, and where I think it's unique is because as the architect, I know every single detail before we build it. Yep. And really what I've found is that actually allows for fewer and fewer. I mean, there's errors in construction, but it allows that to eliminate the disconnect between design and construction. And what would that disconnect look like in a normal situation? Not that they're all horrible, but what's a very typical, hey, the architect said this, but the builder did that. What is What would that look like? Well, it's in the details. And, and for me, I always tell owners it's... It, it's lost in communication. Mm -hmm. So if I designed it, I know the intent. I know every single right. conversation that the owner and I have had. And so when I run into a situation in the build, because on some of these, you don't know what you're going to run to until you get into it with little details, but I'm able to make a judgment call knowing all of those historical conversations. Right. In our experience on the real estate side, it, same deal. Communication is the intangible. It is the skill set that you, that you need in working with hundreds and thousands of people that have bought and sold or built or added on, um, it is not only lost in translation that the builder doesn't understand the vision. Oftentimes the homeowner becomes the intermediary and they're just not equipped to do that. That is not their skill set. That's not what they signed on for. And they also don't understand all of the nuance of the architect. What I would say what that you do freakishly well it's a natural gift. I mean, obviously you've worked at it and you've honed it and you went to school for it and you worked for massive corporations to do it. But I think what you're just naturally gifted at is you, you have thought through at a level of detail that as the homeowner, I haven't, that sounds funky, right? That I haven't thought about my own house as much as you, but I have watched you explain the utility and the thoughtfulness of something where I'm like, I, I would have never gotten there. Like I didn't ask for that you delivered more thoughtfulness and connectivity than I knew to ask for. There was no way I was ever going to translate that to my builder. The other thing that I hate on job sites is all of the, who's the boss talk, right? It's this trades guys like we're in charge today. And this trade is like, forget you. I parked out front. I mean, you, it would blow your mind. The stuff people argue about. And when the architect is the builder and everybody's talking to the same boss, the same driver, the same leader, Holy smokes, do you alleviate a lot of stupidity? Well, I'll tell you, it's a blessing and a curse because at the end of the day... <laughs> blessing for me, right, maybe a right. curse for you. Because at the end of the day, it all stops with one person, right? right? I see it every day because I design projects that I don't build and I build projects that I haven't designed. Yep. But at the same time, when we're able to do it together, like you said, there's not the finger, finger pointing right. that can happen. And it's to me, it's accountability, which I love accountability in the process. Yeah. Because if there's no one to sort of cast blame on or the person who's not sitting there as part of the conversation, right. it's easy to put it on them. Well, and, 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 and look, I'm not, I'm not naming any names, but it just tends to be the way of the trades, right? The plumber, the electrician, the roofer, the, the carpenter, the framer, the concrete guy. It doesn't make them bad people, men, women, whatever, but it tends to be a turf war of, mm -hmm. I did my part right. Right. You know, and, I, and it's unique in the sense that 
as the builder who, I mean, the designer who helps create the vision from the beginning and is, I call it construction the execution phase, right? right? So while we're able to execute, there are going to be things that need to come up and without, you know, needing to point a finger at who's right or who's wrong, it's more of a problem solving. How are we going to get across the finish line together? Yeah. And when we were going through the process of investigating which builder we would choose, we visited homes with you that you designed and didn't build and built and didn't design and really learned throughout the process. So what is, if someone is listening right now and they're thinking, you know what, I do think we are going to, you know, buy a lot and build a home or maybe tear down our home and build a new home or maybe completely transform the one we've got, go up, go out, do both, whatever. How does someone find and choose the right architect and or builder? What does that even look like? Well, I think it all begins with trust and, and really the process, many of my builds turned or started as an architectural challenge, problem, conversation yeah. that didn't turn into a build <laughs> because at the end of the day, yeah. if you don't trust the people you're working with, it's going to be really hard to feel that you're getting transparency and budgets. You're talking numbers. These are people's personal assets, right? Yeah. And so it's really hard when you feel like there's just an edge of lack of transparency. And so I feel like that is one of the things that when you're selecting either an architect or a contractor or one in the same, do you trust them? Do you feel like they're leading you well? Yeah. And, and I've, I don't know how much business we've referred to you since we got started and we're not even a hundred percent wrapped up yet uh, because of that trust, because of we've, we've witnessed that part of the process already happening where the, the, the ability to have your architect, I would throw a designer title on you as well, because you, you're able to connect those dots. So builder, architect, designer, and builder, and you might as well say general contractor, which is kind of what builder means in that sense. Um, and the ability to manage all that with, with context, uh, where the whole story is being told, meaning like the beginning connects to the middle and the middle connects to the end, instead of having to come back and be like, well, I mean that the original end is no longer an option, <laughs> right? Which happens on major projects a right. lot. Um, is unique. So if someone's listening right now and they're already like, I want to talk to this guy, a hey, real quick, tell them, you know, what the company is and how to connect with you. Yes. My name's Adam Panter and the company that I own is my inceptive LLC. And my cell phone is 903-348-3366. And if I don't answer, leave a message. Oh shoot. He just gave out his cell phone. Uh, give it out one more time. 903-348-3366. Give me a call. Go. And if you forget that, go ahead. Go to TotramineTeam.com where you can find out all our recommended pros and vendors there. That's right. If you go to TotramineTeam.com and click on the radio tab, we'll have Adam's info up there soon. Uh, and you can find him that way. Otherwise, it's my inceptive. Uh, look for his name. You can find him all over LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. I'll tell you about DP Lambert and Goosehead Insurance. DP has saved me thousands of dollars over the years like he has for so many of our clients, my like friends, me. family members, even Todd. We even allow Todd to save some so, money with DP. Thanks for doing that, by the way. Email him dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Don't go blah, blah, blah. Don't go blah, 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 blah. Dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Dp. Lambert at goosehead com. L -A -M -B -E -R -T. You can go to touchonmyteam.com where you can find out all of our recommended pros and vendors. That's right. You can also find out what your home would sell for right now, what your home value is today, what your home equity is and has been over the last six months or year or so. You can see a tracker on that data and you can find out what we could sell your home for right now, or you could even get a full price, not full price. You can get an all cash That's offer. That's Courtney. Yeah, full price Courtney. Uh, but you can get an all cash offer for your house and you can compare those things. Hey, what would a cash offer look like? What would a full market value resale look like? What's my current equity? All that. Just go to TotramoneyTeam.com, click on the sellers button or the home valuation button. By the way, you can also search every house for sale by every real estate company in all of DFW. All that starts online, just like my son says. TotramoneyTeam.com. Hey, while we're telling people about really, really, really awesome stuff, like where to get a home valuation. Yeah, Our team has put together this so incredible great. summer fun guide. It's really more of a magazine, right? So it's got places to go to escape the heat. It's got a whole burger battle thing in there that we're doing. Ice cream Ice tour. cream joints. It's got summer so coloring much competition. good stuff. Where you should go to watch fireworks. We've got some extras that we would be happy to give you. If you want one, just go to the website, reach out to us, fill in the contact form. We've already sent like 760 plus of them right. to all of our past and clients, we will run friends, out family of members. print copies. Yes, we're going to have like less than 200. So if you want a print copy, 
go to TatramaniTeam.com, click contact us very quickly, and in the contact bar, just say, I want a summer fun guide. Once we run it's out of the print copies, use all summer. we'll give you a digital. Yeah, this is the thing that should sit on the coffee table or be pinned to the fridge all summer because there's literally something, all certainly every month, but there's, there's stuff you can do day in and day out. Places to go to cool off, beat the heat, fun activities to do at home, best fireworks displays, all that stuff is in there. This should be a tool to help you really enjoy your summer. This has almost nothing to do with buying and selling a home. This is just us trying to help you enjoy your summer better. If there's anything we can do for you, great. But this is just to help you have an incredibly fun summer with family, friends, neighbors, and all the above. Go to TodtramoneyTeam.com, click contact us, and you can request a summer fun guide there. Real quick, I have a question for Adam in your architectural drawing ability. Will you be entering the July 4th coloring competition with the Tatramani home selling team? I definitely will. Now, here's the thing. The, the previous adult winners were impressive. Now, some of the kids are too. The Daniels family has a bit of a beef that they didn't win one time. We, we don't have time to talk about that on the air right now. They, they should have won. And what happened was... Oh, sorry. Totally hit the mute judged. button. It's weird that the, the mute button... There was a protest last year. They didn't participate uh, out, of a, out of a protest for a previous winner. But here's the deal. The adult category has been unbelievably competitive. I will say our very own Brandon Wyatt blows our mind and surprises us every single year. So we'll, we'll see what you're made of. Uh, as you, we'll, we'll get you a copy of the summer fun guide and, uh, you can either color right there in the guide or there's a QR code. You can print your own. We'll get to that. Last week on the show, we talked a lot about, um, the timelines that people have when it comes to buying and selling in this market right now. So I know every situation is going to be different, but generally speaking, how long are you spending with people on the front end trying to, you know, think through designs, think through options? How long does the work generally take? Like what can you give folks here that would be uh, that would be helpful? No, that's a great question. And everybody asks us, how you. long is it going to take for us to get to the build, right? So each project have its own complexity. The bigger the project, the more complex the project, the more time it takes. But at the end of the day, with cities and approvals and things that we're in, and really just giving homeowners enough time to be able to process and create a design alongside me, um, I always tell people six months. Give them six months before your expectation to start building. And that's never too early to start. Even if it's a dream out there, I have some clients who just want to start looking at phase one, phase two of a build or a design, even if they're two years out. So okay, it's never too early. Explain phase one on phase two, because that's probably language people have no idea about. Sure. So a phase one, phase two is really dependent on the client. Some people do it all in one phase, but if people need an immediate remodel for larger rooms, more bedrooms, bathroom upgrades, we're able to handle that in phase one, even if tearing off the roof and building a second floor for additional square footage is phase two. And for a new construction deal, you're saying give somebody about six months to get their head around the idea, the concept, the pricing, uh, the complexity, their design choices, all those things. So then, then a build starts, and I know this is a range, but how long at the moment does it take you and your business to build someone a house? Once that, once that first phase is done and they know what they want and it's drawn up, how long does it take to go make that happen? So we've been able to build, and it all depends on size and complexity as well. Every every house is unique and every uh, project's unique. But I would say you are on the smaller side, a four to six months. On the larger side, you will be eight to 12 months. Yeah, and that's that's been our experience for sure. Our phase one was a little bit longer because we did not initially know that we wanted to go complete new construction. We ended up tearing a house down and, and, and there's some complexities of building on an existing lot and things like that. But the point is, um, that is not at all an unattractive timeline. And by the way, again, we've become buddies and it's really hard to compliment your buddies, especially publicly. That may be a really deep, dark part of me that I just confessed to you. But the reality is once we actually got through phase one and got city approvals and all that, our build has been flying. Uh, and you just don't see that with big production builders. You see people on site for a couple of days and they don't see somebody for a couple of weeks. And we have had really good steady progress and a really enjoyable process. And I'm, I was, I'm joking about the not complimenting your buddies. I, Adam would not be on my radio show if I did not want to share him with the world. Right uh, so. now, now you need to wait till my house is totally finished. And no, I'm just kidding. How but, has he been as a client, Adam? Uh, that's, you know, little, that's not what we're tricky. here for. 
Hey, no, actually, Todd and Dana have been really great. They see the big picture and they allow me to execute. It's a lot of times when people get down in the weeds with me that things can get complicated. So they've been really great to allow me to do my job well and excel at it. And yeah, so, you don't you know, you do all that. Not, no, the, I, I, not the answer I was looking for. But, yeah, know. he really wanted That's you to tell how horrible content. I am. Um, <laughs> But I will say this, uh, every builder, every real estate company has an ideal client. So who is your ideal client? It's not someone that wants to question your architectural ability and redraw drawings. I, I don't know that for a fact, but I would certainly think so. But who's, what kind of home do you want to build? Uh, where do you want to build them? What's, you know, who's the person sitting out there right now that needs to call you because they're the perfect client for you and you're the perfect builder for them? I always love a ground up house. Those are always really fun. But the thing I've learned over the years is the type of person that I want to build for is someone who honestly doesn't want to leave their community, doesn't want to leave their neighborhood and really have either had a growing family or they have needs that change. And so I love it when I'm able to meet a family who wants all of those things, but doesn't want to move way far out away um, for where their current lives are. So taking off a roof, doing, you know, complex projects like that. And then being able to see at the end of the day that we achieved the end goal together is really what brings me great joy. So one question I have, uh, you're not, um, we're not talking about like a, a builder here that's building, you know, 500 houses at a time, right? So how many clients do you generally work with at one time? I would say, again, it goes back to size and complexity, right? So I have a, a book of architectural work that's sort of the work that's coming into the pipeline for the builds. And then I have a series of builds that are being actively constructed at the time. So I would say historically five or so projects keeps me pretty busy. Yeah. And, and, and I, the reason for that question is different people want different things. If you want a custom builder, that's where Adam's going to create custom solutions. And you can hear his excitement, his energy, his passion on... I love a ground up new construction, but also really like to find that custom solution, that vision for a family that feels kind of trapped by area or neighborhood. I don't, where does this exist out there? Well, it doesn't, but we can help you. We being you, Adam's team can help you create it out of your brain, not out of what's already there, right? Do we take the top off and go up? Do we tear it down and go big? Do we resituate on a lot? Do we somehow acquire another lot? You know, those kinds of really fascinating solutions. And you can reframe if I got something wrong there. No, you, you exactly, you're exactly right on that. The thing I love it is when people come up to your house after the build is completed and they go, did you tear it down? And the answer is no, we went vertical here. And yeah. so my goal, and that's where I use my design and architecting skills, is that I don't want it to look like we added a second floor. So it's a complete project top to bottom. Right. The house that's like, that part is old and gunky. That part's really cool. Like, that's not really what you're aiming for exactly. with a builder like Adam. And, and to Ian's other point, a spec builder that's building 40, 60, 80, 200 homes, and it's like, we have four plans, pick one. That's just a whole different category. Not necessarily anything wrong with that. But if you are looking for a, a unique solution to your family or your personal or your individual living situation to build, rebuild, remodel, or try to figure out, is this even possible? That's the kind of thing that gets Adam and his team really fired up. And you can reach out to him. How? Adam Panter, 903-348-3366. Or just go to TodtramoneyTeam.com. We'll have all of his information up on that radio tab in the next couple of days for sure. By the way, uh, Adam worked with Jordan Collins and Quentin and the boys over at PMR for them to put the roof on our new home. So a lot of times when you work with Adam, you may work with some of our other preferred vendors as well. And PMR did an incredible job. By the way, if you didn't catch last week's show and you might have had some hail damage, you need to be talking to PMR Roofing. So go to PMRRoofing.com, ask for Jordan Collins, let them know that you're in that 121 corridor in between Dallas North Tollway and Fairview and you might have had some hail. Or if you haven't had a roofer on your roof in the last two years, you're doing it wrong and you need to do that. PMRRoofing.com. If you haven't brushed up, tidied up, or, or spruced, spruced up your landscaping this year, KeenLandscaping.com. K-E-A-N-E. -E, KeenLandscaping.com. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, TodtramaniTeam.com. TodtramaniTeam.com. What's up, party people? Welcome to DFW Real Estate. We are talking all things Dallas-Fort Worth real estate. Welcome back. Appreciate you hanging with us through the break. And uh, it is always fun to talk to the folks that we talk to all week, but get to talk to them publicly and share them with you. Adam's just been an incredible asset to my family and many of our clients. Uh, just a wonderful guy. Just a gem of a man. Now, we can't 
we're always careful on the radio show not to name clients' names and tell people's addresses and stuff, but even some of our other vendors have taken advantage of Adam's kind of unique combo skill set. So it's always fun to share him and others with our listeners. And if you need information on vendors like that, just go to ToddTremonteTeam.com, click the radio tab. Now, we don't always have a name and a, and a contact info for every category on the planet on there. Sometimes we're still getting to know a vendor or it's not a vendor that gets requested all that often. You can still text or call the office and we can help you with that. So 214-310-0008 if you have questions you'd like us to answer right now. Or if you're like, hey, I'm looking for a custom home builder. Hey, I'm looking for someone that could do uh, you know, foundation repair, whatever. 214-310-0008 is the phone number that you should save in your phone under Todd Tremonti or Todd Broker or Real Estate Help or whatever that, whatever would help you remember. You don't need to go adventure out into Google or Bing or Yahoo or, or Jeeves, if you if that's your thing, um, and, and guess at who's good at this stuff. We're doing it hundreds, if not thousands of times a year in Dallas and Fort Worth and every place in between. Uh, and Adam and others are here to serve you. And we are thrilled to introduce you to them, even when it has no direct, you know, sale aspect for us. So make sure you take advantage of that. ToddTremonteTeam.com. Click radio or just call or text 214-310-0008. Yep. One of those other folks is Patrick Gleros and his team over at Cardinal Financial. Whether you're looking to uh, take out a mortgage on a purchase of a new home, whether you're looking to refinance a mortgage that you've already got, or maybe you're looking to buy something that's going to be more of an investment property, Patrick is who you need to speak to. His team are phenomenal at what they do. It's who I use. It's who Todd uses. It's who so, so many of our clients have used. PatrickGleros.com is where you can go to start the application right there on his website, PatrickGlaros.com. NMLS number 308804. Now we're going to get into some stuff here, Todd, with the um, with the luxury the luxury market. I've got a, a question I want to ask you, but it felt like in that first segment, the first half of the show, it was a little too professional. So oh, we're going to go oh, with the uh, Courtney, re ready, on the, ready on the mute button, yeah. finger on the button. It's everybody's favorite segment. It's everybody's favorite time of the week. Courtney loves this part of the year. Uh, the proceedings. This is when I really shine. All right, here we go, folks. This week's will Cockney it, will rhyming it, will slang it even rhyme? word of the day is sausage and mash. Oh, gosh. Sausage and mash. No cheating and looking, I'm looking at my screen, Courtney. Sausage uh, and mash. Is it sports related? It's not sports related. Sausage and mash rhymes with trash. I bash. Sausage and mash. mash. Um... Like. Back in a flash. <clears throat> Would you like a clue? Okay. Yes, yeah. please. The saying that I'll give you is, I forgot all my sausage and mash. Gear, equipment. My backpack. And fortunately, the answer is cash. Whoa. Sausage and mash, cash. Hey, listen, it did rhyme this time. Finally. The fact is, it's always like, these 12 syllables rhyme with this one. But I was not on that train. Now, here's the funny part of this. It's all like in America, we try to shorten everything and abbreviate it. Yeah, they're, they're like, you know, what would be better is if we used 11 words. Uh -huh. It's more or, fun. It's three isn't words. It, I get it. Three words instead of one. I forgot all my sausage and mash. There you go. Cash. I've got no sausage or mash. Do, do, re, me. All right. all right, let's get into it. So, luxury builds, why are they outperforming the market right now? Well, let me, be, let me clarify a little bit. A, luxury builds are doing well because there's just not enough inventory of houses still. And it seems like a lot of the headlines lately want to talk about how like year over year. By the way, we're getting into the part of 2023 where that's not going to be as true anymore. We're going to start seeing 23 be better year over year than 2022 because late 2022 was kind of tough adjusting to the new rates. We're somewhat adjusted now. But uh, let's call it let, for a second. Let's talk about all luxury houses, including existing inventory. And the reason those are currently outperforming is because like it or not, the luxury, which is a really not the best label, but a higher end, higher price point, you might say wealthier buying audience is less sensitive to uh, an economic slowdown, a potential recession or interest rate rises. 
uh, they have more financial resources, more financial flexibility. And so somebody might say, look, last year, this house was a $3 million house. This year, I might be able to get it at 2.7 or 2.8. And I have the flexibility to finance some of it or all of it or more of it or less of it. Uh, I have more banking options. I might have some financial resources I can move around or borrow against my investments or whatever the case is. Those are broad generalities on purpose, but generally speaking, more of those flexibilities exist in that marketplace, right? By the way, if a home was 3 million and now it's 2.7, it's still luxury in the vast majority of people's minds. And so um, that's an attractive, hey, the market's down a little bit. I can acquire an asset. We can define things as assets or liabilities in different ways, but I can acquire something that adds value to my life uh, in a more strategic or advantageous way. I'm going to do it because the price of milk and gasoline isn't affecting my lifestyle as much. And I'm not speaking for myself as much as I am the person in that quote unquote luxury category. Luxury means a lot of things to a lot of people. Some people define it as two times the market average or higher. A lot of people instinctively think of it as like 1 million and up. You know, this is, I sound like my dad or my grandfather here, but a million dollar house isn't what it used to be. That's a lot obvious thing, but you know, the point is the higher end tends to be less sensitive to interest rate bumps and market fluctuations. Now, there are certain markets where it's even more sensitive, like when the stock market tanks and things like that. But that's part of the answer as to why we're seeing higher priced homes in some areas actually do fairly well right now. That is not true across the board, but in some areas, we're seeing that for sure. Yeah. And one of the areas that I think people think of when they think of luxury homes, higher priced homes is South Lake. Right. So in under one minute, I'm putting you on the clock oh here gosh. in under a minute. I mean, I'll let you go one minute, but not Thank a you. second. I appreciate more, your okay? generosity on that. What do people need to know about South Lake? Well, a lot. So let's go fast. South Lake is broadly known from out of the Metroplex as like a high school sports hub, right? South Lake has put out some really great football players, quarterbacks. It's competitive. It's academically really respected. It's also a place to your point where there are a lot of nice homes. Not all homes in South Lake are massive and luxurious, but as an average area, the price point is going to be higher than a lot of the surrounding areas in the Metroplex. It's north central, northwest-ish of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. There's a lot of great retail, restaurants, recreation. It's located really well if you think about the whole DFW area, close to the airport, close to lakes, close to recreation, highly, highly regarded, and really, honestly, a great place to live. So there's a lot of real estate activity over there, highly competitive from the real estate agent and the home buyer and the home seller area. So it's a place that has been on the map as an attractive area for a long, long time. And it has maintained that. There really haven't been a lot of changes in that activity. I don't know where I am on time, but I think I'm pretty close. One minute, one second. So We're I'm going to call, clip that I'm gonna call it under a minute because I think my I don't know where I am on time was included in that. So I think I nailed it. Classy Courtney, full price Courtney. We'll disagree. Yeah, we usually do. Um, let's talk about uh, something fun that we're doing as a team because you know, South Lake, Grapevine, all over that place, th there's so much good stuff to, to do out ooh, there. Oh, right? I see where you're going. Okay. So what our team has done this year for the first time ever is we've put together a really, really cool summer fun guide. So, so great. <laughs> That's so awesome. for the entire Metroplex. There's like 24, 28 pages yep. of things to do throughout the summer, whether that's to escape the heat, whether that's ice cream spots, whether that's... Fun stuff at home, just burger really joints. Cool things. There's, 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 there's coloring a map, stuff in that. There's a map in the guide that has, I think, 41 map yeah. dots on it of cool things to go do. So, you know, whether you're, whether you're a mom or dad or aunt or uncle or nanny or babysitter or whatever, that's trying to help not just kids, by the way, but everyone figure out what do I do? How do I get every ounce of fun and enjoyment yep. and, and even some learning opportunities and some service opportunities? How do I get all of that out of this summer in DFW? This document, this, this magazine really was intended to serve you. And if you'd like one, and you didn't already get one in the mail from us. If you're not one of our past clients, you know, existing friends and neighbors, we would love for you to become a friend of ours. You can request one. Just go to ToddTremontyTeam.com, click contact us and the little menu bar. If you're on your phone or a tablet, the little three lines at the top, hit that menu opens up. 
and then just hit contact or contact us, fill it out so we know where to send it, and then just say, hey, I'd like a summer fun guide. Uh, if you have a neighbor that might want one, just tell them to do the same thing. Go to ToddTremontiTeam.com or like my son says. ToddTremontiTeam.com. Click contact us and request a summer fun guide. We'll get one to you. Limited availability, folks. Less than 200 of these exclusive yeah. well, There's a thousand of them out there. We got less available. than 200 of them in print. And if we have to, we'll get you a digital one. So we will get you taken care of. Go to ToddTremontiTeam.com. Click contact us and just let us know that you would like a summer fun guide. It's going to be awesome. I am happy at the moment, Todd, that um, a lot of our, most of our transactions recently have been uh, closed at the title company with Republic Title. Mm. No headaches, no headaches. It has been a stress-free time. Republic Title are one of the leaders in the industry when it comes to title in real estate. Um, You can go to republictitle.com. You can learn more about what it is that they do. Um, But, Uh, Angela and the whole crew over there, they do such a great job. 972-423-8777, Republic Title. It's such a transactional business where you would think a title company is just closing out hundreds and thousands of deals, but they care for people, and that is so hard to find. RepublicTitle.com. Uh, if you have not checked the valuation of your home recently, go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, ToddTremontiTeam.com, or like Todd's son says... Touchmoneyteam.com. Way better than I say it. Click the uh, sellers tab or the home valuation tab right there. We've got a really cool new and improved home valuation system where you can, in less than one minute, find out what your home would sell for, what it would rent for. You can get a cash offer right directly there uh, from the website, toddtremoneyteam.com. Hey, do you think we can get the Daniels kids up here this summer to record some drops? Because we, we can get them out there too. I think we probably can. You know what? Like Santa's coming to town. Santa! Just some screaming. Yeah, we can get. We'll, we'll figure something out. I'm sure. Yeah. We'll be more than happy to do that for a reasonable price. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about uh, a, a, another book that we've we've talked about one book in the past. But we're going to talk about another one. It's talking about the twelve simple truths in how to be successful in real in real estate. It was a, a book that you've previously written. Um, the first one of those is to talk to a lot of people about real estate. Yeah. So this is a book that I wrote years ago for real estate agents. Now it's worth paying attention to if you're a buyer, seller, homeowner, renter, whatever, because at some point you're going to look for an agent that does these things, right? The book is called the five lies that will ruin your real estate career. If you're a real estate agent, by the way, we're hiring, we're looking for about four really competitive servant hearted hates to lose uh, loves people and loves to work together on a team type of people right now for our Fort Worth office and our Richardson office. Between the two offices, we're looking for about four people. Uh, and man, would I love to speak with you and just see if if you want to join our family uh, and go to battle for our friends and our clients, whether they're buying, selling, investing, renting, or sometimes just improving their property value Uh, protesting the property taxes, looking for a remodel help or advice. We really, really do love to be intertwined in the lives of our clients and friends so that we can add value instead of just every five or 10 years when they buy or sell, we can add value every couple of months. And we spend a lot of time with our people doing that. So if you're looking to get into the real estate career, or if you've thought about it and you've already got into the business and you've been in the business for about 15 months or less, and you're looking for a better setup, you can reach out to us. Just go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, click on the careers page, and there's a little three-step process for you there. But anyway, I wrote this book for the industry, Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Career, and we've talked about that over the last five or six weeks. The second part of the book, though, the actual title is Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and The Truth That Can Make You Wealthy, and the truth is a 12-part, 12 different truths. Number one sounds really obvious, but it's not quite as obvious as you'd think. It says, talk to a lot of people does not sound like an original brilliant idea, but you would be surprised how hard it is to be a productive, successful real estate agent and maintain the patterns, the systems to talk to a lot of people about real estate. How can I help you? How can I help you protest your property taxes? How can I help you find a new home? How can I help you find a roofer, plumber, electrician, landscape? Oh, you have some carpenter ants. Who, how do you approach that? Who's the right person to talk to? Does that price seem fair? Is this normal? How do I negotiate that? How do I put a contract together on that? When should I let them do that? These are the things that we're talking to people about all the time. You know, hey, I think we're going to have another baby. Do we, you think we need another house or should we add on? These are all the things, and there's a thousand other things 
that we just want to talk to people about. We want to care for them and add value for them. Why do a lot of real estate agents not do that? Well, the answer is because there's not a sale on the other end of a lot of these conversations. I also think people don't do it because they're afraid that they're going to come across as this annoying right. real estate person that people have in their minds that that's who everybody is. Oh, if I sell, if I tell people I'm in real estate, yeah. they're just going to think I'm just going to hit them up for business and I'm going to be the super and annoying that, person. And that is annoying. If yeah, all you're ever is. doing is hitting people up for business, hey, here's some business cards. Have you met anybody lately? Who do you know that's buying or selling? Didn't you say your sister was moving to town? That guy, that guy, that girl, that person is annoying and they're not really welcome in a lot of circles. Like at the Christmas party, that's the person like, oh gosh, here she comes. We don't want to hire you. To right. Be clear. That's not who we're looking for. But we are looking for people that want to add value and use their God-given gifts and abilities to serve others all year long, every year, whether someone needs to buy or sell or not. And if we do that really well, we believe... If we are so valuable to our friends, our family members, and our neighbors, that when the time comes to buy or sell, we'll have a lot of opportunity. And so that's what we mean by talk to a lot of people. Now, even when you want to do that, if you are productive and you're selling a lot of homes and you're helping a lot of people, it's difficult. So on a team like ours, we help people do that with technology and systems and structure and training and accountability and a bit of competition and some fun and doing that together mutually pointed towards the vision of using our God-given gifts and abilities to add value in the lives of others, to create, to build relationships that our grandchildren would be proud of, to differentiate ourselves with excellence, to be fun to work with, and many other things. So that's number one, talk to a lot of people about real estate. Sounds obvious, but a lot harder to do if you don't have people, systems, technology, and accountability, and structure, and fun to help you be consistent. All right, Todrick, here we go. You read and digest a lot of information, right? Is that true. fair to say? That's true. You've actually been uh, kind of picking on me lately because I do more of that than sitting around watching. Well, you spend your fun weekend by going to a conference with a 92 and a 97 year old. So it was fun. Well, it was, it was why I would be saying things like that. So what is great. something that right now you're just absolutely bursting at the seams to tell us. You know, I, this, I hadn't prepared to talk about this, but this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I actually had to do a lot of preparation this week because I, I, uh, I taught a session with a buddy of mine at our church this week. Uh, and we, we were sharing for community groups, right? These are, these are places where people are living life together, sharpening each other, helping each other improve, certainly from a biblical perspective, but also just from like, how do we do life better financially, structurally, parenting, managing work and life and conflict and all the things? Um, and I spent a lot of time preparing for two thoughts. Our, our church has other values, but leads out with these two main thoughts, high call, safe place. And so certainly I studied the Bible. I listened to some sermons. And then I also thought about from not like outside the biblical meaning against the biblical principles, but just logically speaking, what does that look like? Chat GPT. Not a factor, but I, I might have tinkered a little bit. But, but my point is, whether you share my faith or not, living your life with a high call is a good thing to do, right? Expecting a lot of yourself uh, and being surrounded by other people that expect a lot of you, that expect you to be a great father, a great mother, a great husband, great wife, great friend, great neighbor, great employer, great employee, not just good enough, not just getting by and managing the chaos and the negativity and the hurt that comes with that, but growing, getting better every day. I heard a non-faith-based podcast during my research talking about a guy interviewed his son and said, hey, what, what makes a great dad? His son was 17. And he said, hey, you know, when you're a little bitty, you just kind of need your parents to show up. You need your dad at your game. You need your dad to be at home. Then you get to an age where you're a little bit older and really you need your dad to be a great role model. And in order for your dad to be a great model, they really have to work on themselves. So he kind of unpacked it and he was basically saying to be, to live with this high call means to work on yourself, right? To have a high call for yourself, live in a way that that expects a lot of others. Now, not a constantly annoying, burdensome, pushing people to excellence and number one status and all that. So my preparation for that teaching this week is what I'm sharing with others today is like, listen, it's okay to have high expectations for yourself. It's okay to have high expectations for others. Don't beat people down with that. But that's attractive to people when you live in a way that you want to add value, you want to be a great resource, you want to be a great dad, a great husband, a great leader, a great owner, a great employer, a great employee, a great friend. 
expect a lot of yourself. Use your gifts to add value that way. You'll encourage others to do that. You'll empower others to do that. You'll give them permission to push and grow and life will be better for everyone in your circle. Don't burden people with that, but be a gift to them in that way. By my uh, calendar, today is June 3rd. I think that's right. Sounds that sounds about right. right. Uh, that means that we're officially kicking off PBJ Drive. PBJ Drive. It is that time of year. Tell the folks everything you want to tell them. Well, that means I'm officially both angry and excited. Angry that there are hungry kids in our community right now that are used to getting lunch and sometimes breakfast at school, regardless of your politics or how you feel about that. We all agree. And if you don't, then you feel free to listen to another radio show. But if we all agree that children need food on the table, they should have basic nourishment. We should help meet their basic needs. And there are sadly kids. And by the way, a lot of seniors in our community and others that don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And, and we can solve that problem. We can meet that need. We can bridge that gap. And we do it through our peanut butter and jelly drive because the food banks tell us peanut butter and jelly has a good shelf life uh, and it's decent basic nutrition. You can help us by dropping peanut butter and jelly off at either one of our offices. Information about where our offices are and how you can do that is online at pbjdrive.com. Or you could send some cash and we'll do the hard part for you. You can do that on Venmo. The Venmo account is at PBJ Drive. Very simple. At PBJ Drive on Venmo. We'd love to partner with you. Send 50 bucks, send 100 bucks, send 500 bucks. Last year we had several people, a thousand or above. If you give a substantial gift, then we would love to reward you with some fun and some excitement. Uh, we'll tell you more about that as we make our way through the month. Follow us on social media. Uh, tech, check out our summer fun guide where we're talking about all the ways not only can we have fun, but we can make sure that other people have a sound, safe, enjoyable, uh, peaceful summer. And listen, basic needs like food, we can do that, DFW. We can meet those needs. We're partnering with the North Texas Food Bank and the Tarrant Area Food Bank, as well as radio stations and other businesses. All that information is online at pbjdrive.com or Venmo right now to at pbjdrive. 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, whatever you can. We'd love to celebrate with you. If you'd like to do that in the name of your business, we would be thrilled to celebrate you live on air. Uh, and help grow your business and your impact in our community. pbjdrive.com or Venmo directly at pbjdrive. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home this summer or investing, go to todtramaniteam.com. If you don't know what your house is worth, go to todtramaniteam.com, click on home valuation. 